This program is a presentation of UCTV for educational and non-commercial use only. Entschuldigen Sie bitte, these sublimate pills. I think my cat may have swallowed one. What should I do? Danke. Danke schön. Nobody. Frau. Nobody. Guten night, my little one. Didn't you always tell me easy living people go easily to their deaths? But I don't go easily, Frank. I leave with a broken heart. My sister, she retired one afternoon. As we took tea in the adjoining room, then she let out a scream that froze our blood to ice. She'd cut her throat and got it out her life. She suffered unrequited love. Now you see there her blood stain on the carpet by the chair. What makes her life so cheap? What makes her tears so tidal? Drowning us so deep in thoughts of suicide. All confidence is lost, yet everybody hides their sorrow at our family's suicide. My mother, she was sewing father's shirt when memories of my sister seize her heart. She drew the cotton from the needle. Then you see she swallowed it and followed it with three. The pain the needles caused my mother tried to hide till they lodged within her kidneys and she died. What makes her life so cheap? What makes her tears so tidal? Drowning us so deep in thoughts of suicide. All confidence is lost, yet everybody hides their sorrow. And Our suicide. Tilly Nevers. Tilly Nieman. <coughs> T 
תראה ואת הקד. I'm still watching. Of course. I'm still watching. Of course. Are you still a virgin? I see in my dreams the man for whom I was created and who was created for me. Is that you, Frank Federkind? Was I created for you? Or did you create me? Is that what happened the night at Emil Horlitz's? I'm at the house of Emil Holitzer, the famous artist. He's painting a portrait of me in a Piero costume. It's the main prop in both of Frank's Lulu plays, Pandora's Box and Earth Spirit. You see, in Act One of Earth Spirit, the artist Schwarz is painting Lulu as a Piero. But during the sitting, Oh, leave me alone! What are you trying to do? You can't catch me, not in this Piero costume. All the kingdoms of the world lie there at my feet. Mind, there's a deep ditch. Don't fall in. How do I feel? Like I've fallen in a river. Which is colder, the river or my heart? So, Horlitz is there. And Herr Frank Wedekind. After dinner, I go up to the studio to put on my Piero costume. Hmm. Hello, Mr. Wedekind. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Leave me alone! What are you trying to do? You can't catch me, not in this Piero costume. Mind, there's a deep ditch. Don't fall in. Oh, how do I feel? Like I've fallen in a river. No, I'm not going to kiss you. You smell of tobacco. Suddenly, Herr Vaderkin stops in his tracks. But this is the first act of Earth Spirit, he cries. Why do you write such stupid plays, I reply. Why did I say that? If Frank's plays are stupid, then I must be stupid because I am Frank's play. No, Frank's plays are my life, but did I become Lulu, or was Lulu already me? Maybe it's both. Maybe that's why I excel as Lulu. Bravo, bravo. Fräulein Neves presents Lulu with a playful, pleasing ease. She's naive in her depravity, bewitching little tease. <sighs> She's a gorgeous little animal who captivates and glitters. 
And reserved recognition for such gorgeous little titties. But as for her Vedekind, yes, as for her Vedekind, yes, as for her Vedekind, dear Fräulein Devers. I congratulate you on your success as Lulu. I no longer have the inclination for us to play together. I can take no competition with me. I understand. After all, I'm very logical. I'm an unknown actress and you're a national icon. So. I go back to Frankfurt, and Frank works on his play, Kidala. But it's not enough. I want to climb that mountain. Dear Herr Wedekind, dearest Frank, dear Herr Wedekind, it is not nice that you are not taking care of me. I found you very impressive. My director said that your director might work with me. Well, it is difficult for me to write personally to your director, so I address you instead. You were very sorry that I wasn't given a contract, but it would be so good for my career. Did you write me into your life, Frank? Or did I write you into mine? <laughs> Who knows, but abracadabra. October 18th, Tilly Neves arrives in Berlin to appear as Fanny Kepler and Frank Vedekin's Hidala. Of course not. October 19th, Tilly has dinner with Frank. She goes back to his place. Are you still a virgin? Of course not. October 23rd, Tilly, now Vedekind's mistress. I'm still a virgin. You know I'm not. October 28th, Tilly and Frank pose nude for a photographer. Oh, of course, why not? December 10th, Tilly and Frank have menage a trois with actress Ida Orla. Tilly lets Vedekind beat her with a riding crop. Is this the right chord, Frank? You're the master you command. Just one slap from your manly hand. Blood comes rushing to my bloodless cheek. Hit me, hate me, make me weak. It's here inside me, fuel the fire. Raging devil called desire. Whatever he wanted, I gave him pleasure. For that was the bond that would bind us together. I have to make a choice about you, to form you in art or to love you. You're a talented man, Mr. Vedekind, surely. You can do both. At the end of the evening, Frank took Ida home. After you left, I felt dead, completely empty. It's not possible. He doesn't believe in your talent doesn't believe you're capable of becoming an actress. Bah! Women are actresses by nature because no woman can keep a man happy by being sincere. Frank? But do I really want to be an actress? Do I really want to be famous? I have no idea what kind of courage I will need. Frank, these are not my words. Am I strong enough to climb the mountain? 
These are not my words, Frank. They're yours from your play Musique. Well, they sound like my words, but they're not. What if the mountain's made of a, a, a pile of, a pile of dead bodies? Can I climb that? Yes, I'm on fire. I'm in love with my own destiny. Yes, Frank's right. I am in love with my own destiny. I'm at a theatrical event in honor of our great poet, Heinrich Heine. Frank's written a prologue. He's performing it himself. In green velvet dress, with rose pinned in hat, my keen searching eye seeks Venus's breast. <laughs> it's about me. It's a dedication to me. I have a green velvet dress, and with it I wear an enormous hat with roses. I sit in the stalls and I feel elated after the performance. Champagne, yes. Yes, champagne. Mm. Richard Weinhoffel, the composer. Oh, I'm so pleased to meet you. I've heard all about you. I'm not flirting, Frank. I'm just being polite. What's the matter, Frank? Yes, of course, I like the dedication. <laughs> yes, Frank, of course, I'm flattered. Thank you. I said thank you. No, Frank, please don't say that. That's not nice. It's not kind. Stop it, Frank, please. If you carry on like this, I shall do something. I don't know what. Maybe this. Oh! Your insults hurt me. Good, fine. Let's go home. I'm ready. What did you say, Richard? Watch out. She'll kill herself. Where are we going? No. I don't want to go back to my lodgings. Let's go back to your lodgings. There, you see? Your big plum bed. <laughs> Where are you going? Don't go, Frank. Don't leave me alone. Where are you going? He'll come back in a minute. He'll come back in a minute. Frank? Don't tell me you've gone to a bar for a glass of beer. Can you do that, Frank? How can you leave me alone like this? Love me or leave me, but don't torment me so. <sighs> Snow falling from heaven. I'm a poor, cold girl selling flowers outside the Alhambra. Frank, you're back. I missed you. What's the matter? Why so angry? Not my photographs, no. Don't tear my pictures. Don't step on my face, no. Crush the oil up. Oh, my photographs. Fire, fire, fire. I seized a moment and ran out of the room and down the stairs. Naked, but I can't bear it any longer. I run out of the house, across the street, down the stone steps to the river Spree. I leap straight in. Oh, 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 which is colder, the river or his heart? Help! Help! Arms stretched towards me. It's the boatman who hauls me 
out of the freezing water as Frank runs down the steps. Oh, they wrap me up in Frank's coat and they carry me up to his lodgings. Frank sits beside my bedside and weeps the whole night through. Don't weep, Frank. Don't weep. I have a massive burn on my upper arm where the hot glass cylinder of the oil lamp must have stuck to me and I didn't even notice. It's a wonder I didn't burn myself to a cinder. The next day, Frank sits on the bed and says, Will you marry me? Say the right thing, Tilly. Say the right thing. Yes. And thus we are engaged. A dream. Or is it a nightmare? Should I marry him? Shouldn't I marry him? Is this marriage a huge threat to my precious independence? He's 22 years older than me and I'm like wax in his hands. But if I don't marry Frank, who am I? And if I do marry Frank? Oh, Tilly Vertiken, the wife of the famous author. Should I open this Pandora's box? I love, I honor, I obey. I obey. I obey. Till death us do part. And now for the execution. Our wedding feast. A picnic at Munich Zoo. The music. The snarling and cackling and screaming of wild animals. Our honeymoon, a trip to Nuremberg. Well, I suppose you could call it a honeymoon. Its real purpose was our joint guest appearance in Frank's new play, Death and the Devil. Marry me, you know, for once in your life, the superhuman sacrifice of woman's love is capable of. All I ask of my marriage is to lie at your feet and to listen to you. Hmm. Nuremberg already. What time is it? Four o'clock in the morning? We take a carriage straight to our hotel where we're greeted by the night porter. Herr Weidekind and daughter, is it? <laughs> Already our marriage is not going well. We proceed to our room. Outside in the corridor, I bump into a man. Oh, oh sir, excuse me. I don't think the man's behavior is particularly surprising. It's five o'clock in the morning. I'm young, elegant, alone. Besides, I think he's a little bit tipsy. Frank, you'll never guess what happened just now. What do you want me to do? Box the man's ears? Challenge him to a duel? Beat him up? Or what? I had unwittingly painted the devil on the wall. The devil of jealousy and the death of our marriage. Is 
this the right fret, Frank? For the first years of our marriage, you would lord me to the skies. Quite the most terrific creature with the most alluring eyes. But as fast as you could praise me, and as high as you could raise me, you would throw me to the depths of the abyss with the tenderness and softness of a kiss. When I glimpsed the truest colors of your heart, there was an overflowing loving at the start. But you thought that if you gave me even half of half a chance, I would lead you on a merry, daring dance. So you trained me like a tiger with your most unyielding stick. You shouldn't fear me, you should love me, you would say. And I told you my activities and wrote on little cards every movement I was making, every moment of the day. Because I honor you and cherish and obey. Train a wife properly, and she'll support her husband twice as easily as he can support her. As long as he handles the intellectual side and defends the moral fiber of the family. Even at the Togelstuben with your poets and your artists, I can barely raise my eye before your accusations fly. I feel we're sitting on a powder keg, and all that's left for me is to beg forgiveness for the things I didn't do, and to offer my apologies for only loving you. If I cannot idolize my wife, then let her go and take her own life. Really, Frank? Is that what you want? Or are you just quoting from your play, Parcel Wetterstein? Oh, you know my life is your life. I want so much to make your life peaceful, your home beautiful. I shall try to be the ideal wife for you. I shall even put rubber on the heels of my boots so you don't hear me walking around the apartment. See? <laughs> Santa, please! We mustn't wake her way, the kind. You know how late he sleeps, and you also know how easily he's disturbed. No, Santa, he's not in good humor at the moment. I don't know. Perhaps he's unhappy that I'm at rehearsals every day. Does he not understand I'm still in a five-year contract? Perhaps once an ideal husband opens, he'll be far happier. Yes, Santa, I do get to see Harry Walden every day. I know he's much adored, but he's also a very fine actor. That's right, I play the girl he falls in love with. No, Santa, I'm sure Herr Vedekind isn't happy about that either. But it's my job. Herr Wedekind understands I'm an actress. Sometimes we have to act falling in love with other men. Yes, Santa. Of course it's much easier when the man is as charming as Harry Walden. No, Frank, please. Please don't leave me. Say the right thing, Tilly. Say the right thing. Don't break my contract. I'll pull out of an ideal husband. So what if it becomes a huge success? So what if it could change my whole career? It doesn't matter. We're only just married. And we're having a baby. That's what I'll tell them. I'll tell them we're having a baby. Please, let's just draw a veil over the whole proceedings. My darling Frank, I love you. Frank is my life. Frank is my voice. I love him very much. There is no point in my helping other writers to become successful. It is more important for both of us that Frank's plays are successful. I understand that. I'm very logical. 
whatever I have gained independently as an artist, whatever I have gained independently as an artist, whatever I have gained independently as an artist is preferably forgotten. I have become a person only through Frank. Besides, besides, you're a very erotic man, Frank Fadekind. Very handsome, very charming, and you know so wonderfully how to create appealing situations. How do you know, Frank Vedekind? How do you know? Is it your lifelong devotion to the selfless worship of sensual pleasure? You affect me very strongly, Frank Vedekind. Very strongly indeed. And in return, I put on boots and costumes. And I know what happens. Tilly's high boots don't let you sleep, do they? Do they, Frank Vedekind? My red boots. And my buckskin boots. And then, when I dance for you, etc., 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 I'll dance for him till I drive him insane, etc., etc., etc. I'm sorry, Frank. It's not your fault you don't give me satisfaction. I just can't seem to reach the redemption. Oh, it's not you. I find you very attractive. I confess, when I'm alone, I take the old tool of onani. But even that leaves me tired, uneasy. Disinterested. Frank, I love you. I respect you, but the thing is, acting for me has a lot to do with uh, erotic stimulation. Oh, you know that, it is for you too. And when I find an actor attractive, scenes on the stage, well, they inevitably become more, more intense. <laughs> the free love market where the tigress celebrates her triumph. Things only happen on the stage, Frank. The first time I ever broke my marriage vows, that was the saddest. No, Frank, these are not my words. They're yours from Castle Wetterstein. Things only happen on the stage in front of an audience. Every time I've been unfaithful, he's found me twice as beautiful. Stop it, Frank. These are not my words. Behind the scenes, everything is gone. Don't you understand? You write these characters for me. What am I supposed to do? And then when night after night, you leave me alone to the early morning hours. I know where they go, Frank. I smell their perfume. Women for you are either holy or whores. Holy or whores. And what am I? Holy. My whole life 
Life has been a comedy. This is how it really is in hell. against my own self-loathing. Please come back to Munich and help me to figure out who I am. No reply, no reply, no reply, no reply. There is nothing that I want to write. I have written to you in my utmost despair everything that tortures me. And you write, there is nothing that I want to write. There is so much that I want to tell you to prove my true love. But how do we know how you will interpret it? I regret I wasn't drowned when I jumped into the river. I am taunted as a cuckold. People make a mockery of me because of your previous love affairs. Things only happened on the stage, Frank. In plays, you wrote for me and cast me in. If you cannot understand this, Tilly, then it makes no sense for me to come back to Munich. With best regards, F.W. No telegram, please. <laughs> no telegram. No telegram, 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 no telegram. No telegram, no telegram, no telegram. Today I ran like a mad woman back and forth in my room. I wrote a letter of six pages that I don't dare send for fear of being misunderstood. Say the right thing, Tilly, say the right thing. I will write to you constantly of the children, your two little girls whom you adore, and they adore you too, Frank. I shall not leave this apartment for the time being. Oh, who knows if I can even leave this bed for a long time. I'm afraid of having a breakdown caused by these experiences. Have you tried dancing? As for your suggestion that I try dancing, it's not even worth talking about. 22 letters, six postcards, six telegrams. 22 letters, six postcards, six telegrams. 22 letters, six postcards. Must I be dead to prove that you mean all to me? Tilly Navet. Tilly. Neiman. Tilly Vedekind. Tilly Nobody. <laughs> Show my legs. 
It always causes the sensation, doesn't it, Frank? People are used to it in the circus, but not in the theater. Oh, you love the circus, don't you, Frank? And you love it when I show my legs! The fourth creature. A demon creature. La Maya. Nightmare. I wear this short little skirt, which sticks out like a bell. And I balance on a ball that rolls across the stage. Of course, it's very difficult, so I train every day under Frank's strict control. Is this the right key, Frank? So you train me like a tiger with your most unyielding sticks, and I stretch my bones and muscles till I execute the splits. I take singing, I take dancing, and I study all your chansons, and you measure me and know damn what I weigh. I'm the ideal of a woman that you've molded from your clay. You control my mind and body every day, and you dress me up in costumes, and you tell me what to say, and I put our girls in children's homes whenever we're away, because I honor you and cherish and obey. Yes, this is my will. I could divorce if I wanted to, but... I know it's far more advantageous to be Frau Frank Wedekind than Miss Tilly Nevers, a middle-rate actress in mediocre theatre. If the lamb doesn't want to be torn to pieces, she too must become a wolf. And I would be a silly goose to get divorced. And so, my world rose obediently beneath his feet. Dresden, Graz! In Liebestrang, Frank Vedekind is awful, but Frau Vedekind is clearly quite divine! Hello! Goodbye! Frankfurt, Leipzig, Köln! In King Nicolo, Frank Vedekind's ridiculous, but till he's possible in Castle Wetterstein. Hello! Goodbye! Stuttgart, Zurich, Prague! Mr. Vedekin's performances are pitiful and Tilly's glitter's gotten shaken of all shine. Shut up! Shut up! Get these voices out of my head. Why do you condemn us as actors? Frank had taught me about diction and articulation and a lot of other skills. But I became cramped and stilted and unnatural and I found that I... I couldn't... Uh, I couldn't... I'm so sorry, ladies and gentlemen. I have absolutely no idea what I say next. Line? Read? Anybody? Somebody? Just tell me what to say. Throw me a line. I'm falling, falling into the abyss. Lost somewhere between the actor and the character and the void. Black, black void. 
all my authentic talents, talents which used to bring me success, are blocked. Sense it. Sense it. Frank's one act play, written especially for me. A Pandora's box of a different kind. My whole life dragged up, spewed out. My mother's melancholia, my father's infidelities, my own desire to become an actress. I leap into the river Spree. My lack of sexual fulfillment. Even the menage a trois with Ida Olaf. Because everything that you now veil from me in private, you display unashamedly for the public. Everything is displayed, including my body. More of my legs than ever before. Oh, Buridan. Darling, Buridan. Would you like me to ride around the room on your walking globe? Doesn't that entertain you anymore? Am I worth nothing to you without an adoring audience? <sighs> My poor Katidia, how deeply you humiliate yourself to endure living together with me. I would like doing it. If only I saw that at least I could be useful to you. But the more I change myself in accord with all your wishes, the less I mean to you. Sometimes you don't even see me when I'm sitting right in front of you. Katija, listen. <coughs> In Palermo, I saw a dancer who danced on an elastic wire. Beneath her feet, her thighs were fastened glinting knives, and her eyes were glistening with desire. As she danced around the swinging cable, the young girl took off all her clothes. Then she flipped three somersaults high in the air. Then she landed gently, smiling in innocent repose. And I see you as you sit there. I see your breast, your leg, your lips, your hips, your hair. I see you, you're as alive as the girl who walks the tightrope of a thuggling night. Yes, this was the character that our husbands had written for us our favorite part. And we were willing to play this creature, this cracked reflection of our distorted selves. I know it's painful, but what choice do we have? It's our survival. After all, without Frank Vedekind, who are we? Without Frank's words, we have nothing to say. Try and say the right thing, Tilly. Hmm? Try and say the right thing. Okay. Whenever the children uh, whenever the curtains Whenever the potato <laughs> have one nothing to say to each other unless it's your carefully crafted dialogue. And yet strangely, it's through friends.
excuse of our words that we finally free ourselves. On stage as Khadija in censorship, our heart is unfettered by the burdens of love. No longer are we falling, we're flying, flying from a dark cage towards the light. And every night there's thunderous applause, and we're lauded by the critics like never before. So much money and my wonderful reputation. Shut up, Frank. You know that's not true. After your death, the children and I will be sad. Sad, sad! Oh, my darling, I am so, so sorry. Forgive me. You should perhaps know that Frank has been seriously ill now for quite some time. It's his appendix wound. It won't heal. And what with the war and the rationing, we just can't seem to get what we need. Very few people know of his illness, not even his two little girls. Several times he's been close to death, but each time he works relentlessly, unceasingly. You must forgive him. We must all forgive him. He is a great man, a true artist. What's that, Frank? You want to go away? Where? <laughs> Bavaria, why? Say the right thing, Tilly. Say the right thing. I understand. I'm very logical. He wants to go away, alone. He's talking about divorce. <laughs> what have I done to deserve this? What have I done? Every beating of my heart is like a pistol shot. Oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, give me the strength to be just a little bit happy. <laughs> no, I'm not hysterical. Whip that's what I need. Whip me and make it stop. Make the fire in my head stop. You see, Frank, these are your words from your plays. But now they're mine. You've made them mine. Where do your words end and my own thoughts begin? Who am I, Frank? Who is Tilly Vedekind? Tilly's too depressed. I have given her parts to another actress. What? I have given your parts to another actress. What? I have given your parts. You have given my parts to another actress. You can't do that. Those are my words. Those are my lives. What will I say without my parts? This is the greatest hurt you could ever inflict on me, Frank Vedekind. You have broken your contract. You have betrayed me entirely. Say the right thing, Tilly. Say the right thing. Shut up, Tilly. This is the right thing. I have put my youth, my talent, my whole career completely at your disposal. Not to mention my body. Is all of it for nothing? Is my sacrifice for nothing? You have given my parts to another actress because Tilly is too depressed. Ha ha ha! Is it any wonder? A great injustice has been done to me. I have been left out in the cold. So quiet without him. <sighs> so peaceful. 
already. No, he will come back and our rows will start all over again. That I can no longer endure. I would rather die. I would rather die. The, the jar of sublimate pills, where, where are they? The ones I dissolved in water to bathe his wounds. Here, poison, see? Finally, nature helped herself. Out through my skin came the poison. Every day I'm rubbed with oils, and the room is covered with skin like snow. The skin on my hands is as hard as parchment. One day, I pull it off like a pair of gloves. The lines of my life are mapped upon them. New skin beneath, as tender as a babe's. New skin in my hands, new life in my soul. I cannot come back to you, Frank. I don't want you near me right now. I know it's been two weeks, but I don't want to see you. I know it's been four weeks, but now it's my turn to ask for divorce. I have my future now, my choices. Most esteemed Herr Director Geheimstadt, I would very much like an engagement at your theater. I can play Ophelia and Jessica and Viola. I can even play Clash in an Egmont. You see, Frank, I don't need your words anymore. I have Shakespeare and Schiller and Goethe. One day, I may even have words of my own.
Each day I grow stronger. And each day I realize it's not Frank's fault. My depression, it's not his fault. My sister was depressed. She cut her throat and gutted out her life. And my mother was depressed. She swallowed it and followed it with three. You're a great man, Frank Wedekind, a great man and a true artist. And you too are in great pain. We cannot get divorced, Frank. As you yourself said in Earth Spirit, how can you get divorced when you've grown so much a part of one another that half of your own self would go too? Time. That's all I need. Time. And time indeed was passing. My beloved Tilly, I am living in the same apartment in which I wrote Spring Awakening 20 years ago. The circle is closed. I shall die this year. And despite all the sorrow, despite all the pain, Tilly and Frank make love again. Our bodies are aching. Our hearts are entranced. Frank writes in his diary, tonight, Tilly danced. After days and nights of you not making love to me, yet putting all our privacy on show, as you take your final breath, and as you stumble to your death, my darling, somehow we can't let each other go. Though the passion and the pain no longer lure me, to the pleasures and the promises of night. And the way you used to taunt me seems to hunt me down and haunt me with the ghosts of some forgotten dark delight. Tilly dances, and as she dances, she casts up all the veils of silence and despair. As Tilly dances, she takes her chances on a love that maybe was or wasn't there. The softness of our skin has turned to paper. The glitter in our eyes has lost its shine. Though the brushing of your lips against the curving of my hips just for a moment seems to kindle the divine. The beating of your heart is like an echo And your rhythm like the oceans on the shores And your breath against my skin Holds the confession of a sin Of all those nights in all those arms Of all those whores Dilly dances and as she dances She casts up all the veils of silence and despair As Dilly dances she takes her chances on a love that maybe wasn't even there. Now I stand before you naked, like Salome before Herod, in a seven-veiled, voluptuated trance. I forgive you now, my darling, just hold back the break of morning. Let me dance, or let me dance, or let me dance, or let me dance. Just let me dance, please let me dance, my darling, dance. I slept in my bed again, in our apartment. Thank you, Dad. 
You're dressed already. So early? To Nymphenburg? Why? Isn't that where your doctor is? Into hospital again so soon? I had no idea. Perhaps I could come with you? I visited Frank almost every day. Sometimes I brought the children. His first operation went very well, and so I brought him flowers. Red, his favorite color. A few days later, they performed a second operation it didn't go so well. And during the night, Frank came down with a fever. The next morning, they telephoned me. Complications, they said. In flying haste, I got myself together. I'm coming, Frank, I'm coming! Frank had been calling me for hours, even outside the hospital and down the corridor. I could hear him calling. Jimmy! Jimmy! Frank! Three or four doctors came in for a consultation. I was sent outside. Then one of them came out to see me. There is no longer any hope, he said. Frank. We were left alone. Then they brought him champagne, just like Dr. Schoen asks Lulu for champagne after she shoots him in Earth Spirit. Give it to me with your mouth, Tilly. <laughs> Why do you want me to do that? Come on, Tilly, don't be clumsy. So I fed him the champagne from my mouth. He breathed heavily. I held his hand. Ah, oh, you're here, my darling Tilly. Darling Tilly. Then he started to breathe heavingly and gaspingly. breathing gaspingly too. Oh, <laughs> I did.
Tilly somebody. Yes. Tilly somebody. I was over 80 years old when I wrote my memoirs. Lulu, die Rolle meines Lebens. Frank had been dead for nearly 50 years. And after several breakdowns, my young doctor Dieter Schwarz suggested I write my story. Mood lifting medicine, they called my treatment. Lulu, the Rolle minus Lieben. Lulu, the role of my life. My own voice, my own words. Who was Lulu? Who was Tilly? Earth spirit? Spirit of nature? Pandora's box, the bringer of disaster? Perhaps it's time to close the box, to draw a veil over all that has passed, and leave inside a ray of hope. I was born in April in 1886. I was wrapped in a baby's pillow and on my little head I wore a veil. Since then I have always loved veils. 